Welcome, in front of me is a Realme GT60 and today I will show you how you can bypass the Google verification on this device. Now while I'm going through the setup I'm going to quickly mention that there's a couple things that we will need. So number one will be uh, the connection to network. So I will be signing into Wi-Fi right now. Now that is a lesser thing that obviously basically everyone can connect to. Now the thing that will be a little bit probably harder to come by for some people, I think I just connected to or put in the wrong password, but anyway, uh, the thing that might be harder to come by would be a second phone. I will be using uh, some kind of Motorola right here for this, uh, but any Android device with access to Google Play Store should theoretically function. There is some limitations to some crappier phones that, for instance, have the draw over other apps feature disabled which those are like low-end devices, but for the most part, uh, any kind of run-of-the-mill Android should work. Now let's try it again. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now that I have connected, uh, we can basically begin. Now I do have the little lock icon right here in the corner signifying that the device is locked. And obviously if I progress further, it's going to tell me that I need to verify my screen lock. Uh, and my uh, or my Google account. Now, to be told, I know both of those, but throughout the process, we will I'll obviously won't be using any of that to verify this process. I'll be showing you how we can bypass this without verifying anything or providing any kind of screen lock or any kind of passwords for your accounts. So anyway, here's the uh, pattern. And if I close this, I have the Google account. Now to get started with the actual bypass, we're gonna uh, stick on the Wi-Fi connection page right here. Once you connect to your network, you can then click on this little eye icon right here Next you will select share now when I click on it I will hover my hand over the display because it does show the QR code along with the password So I just want to kind of you know have that not happen. So Go so you can see part of the QR code I am revealing it uh, more part of it because right here We have the nearby button. That's what you want to press and next we will select continue. Yep, there we go. So yeah, continue. And you have the quick share page. You're gonna select the three dots, settings, and then you're gonna click on the blue text right here to learn more about quick share. Next, it loads up some article. We're gonna click on the three dots again, and we're gonna select share article. In here, choose Chrome. Now this will open it up and then close Chrome again when you select use without an account. So that's completely fine and close or not oh there we go that's a pain that you didn't click it so anyway uh once it closes it up just repeat the process share chrome no thanks and as you can see we are now on the chrome page and the search bar you want to navigate to hard reset.info slash bypass So like this, I'm gonna click on next, uh, consent, and then scroll down till you find settings. This opens up your actual phone settings and in here we will navigate to home screen and lock screen. And then you wanna select home screen layout. And this glitches out the phone and actually opens up your home screen. Now, before you go clicking off, the process is still not finished. And I'm gonna quickly go through an explanation process uh, for people that will probably notice that uh, we could have done something in the settings that we will do later on. Uh, so I do want to explain why we're taking this kind of approach uh, step by step, because the uh, order at which we are doing things actually matters. So we right now just glitched into the home screen. The device, the device still thinks it's in a setup state. As you can see, it even shows you the little lock icon, which is only visible in the setup page. Um, so the phone, for all it knows, it's still in on its setup screen. And if you were to reboot this phone, it would go back to the setup screen because that's where it's at in reality. Um, so right now we're just gonna open up an application and do something. And later on, 
Once we finish up the setup, we're gonna navigate into settings and perform a factory reset of the device. Now we had the settings open, we could open it up right now. But because the device still thinks that it's in a setup state, uh, resetting our device right now would literally do nothing because the phone would go into the settings uh, or into the reset and it would check, is it, set, is it in a setup state? Yes. Is it locked? Yes. Okay, cool. I will reset it, but it's gonna stay locked as you haven't verified anything. But once the setup is complete, the device checks it. The device is uh, set up fully. You're going through this reset, and when doing reset through settings, if you're doing it after the setup through settings, the device just kind of removes all the data as it considers the, the user that is doing the reset through settings to be a legitimate user that just wants to reset their phone. So. Obviously to do so, he would need to have provided all the screen locks and uh, all the info that it requires to do so. Without it, he can't do it. So therefore, it considers that yeah, it's free to remove all the data as that's kind of what the user wants, which also includes the protection. Which in our case would also include the protection that was previously used on the device as a verification method. So with that explained, let's continue. So. Right now, we're going to open up our tools folder right over here, and we want to uh, open up the clone phone application. Select that this is a new device, and with any kind of pop-up, just select allow. Our other device will be Android, and this shows us our QR code that we can then connect to this device with. So grabbing our other device, you want to open up your Play Store and search for clone phone come offline apparently okay now that i've connected try again and as you can see this shows up with a couple different options uh, of applications that are named clone phone there usually should be an icon next to it but let's see i'm just gonna kind of like reopen this hopefully that will fix the problem guess it's not going to show images you know what, that's fine now the one that we're looking for will be oppo one now this is a realme device but because this is technically one in the same company this will work now look at that and it's actually loading slowly the images so we're gonna download this oppo clone phone now we should have a download button right here this device is very slow so let's give it some time can i just like click on here nope come on oh boy that's rough um Maybe I have internet problems. I'm gonna enable my hotspot on my phone and try to use my mobile network and see if that actually works any better. Okay, so I've connected. Oh, look at that. So yeah, it looks like it was my internet problem, I think. Okay, I am gonna turn off my mobile network now. Uh, anyway, so once the application is downloaded, you can open it up. And next we're going to select agree and continue and then scan QR code, which will bring us our some, some notice. So let's select OK. Now, stupidly enough, I don't know why this is like that. Is it like lost in translation kind of thing or whatever? Uh, but we need to grant access to things like camera and to do so uh, counterintuitively, which the first time around I was stupidly confused about this, was the uh, button deauthorize. So to authorize something, we need to deauthorize it. Makes absolute sense, right? Then anyway, we're going to click on that. And then you want to select uh, while using the app, which is the best course of action, I'll say. Anyway, uh, as you can see, this opens up your camera. And what we can do is just point that camera at the QR code right here. And this will now begin uh, connecting these devices. Now, before it does, we need to <laughs> deauthorize it logically, right? We're going to deauthorize and then uh, while using the app. Now, this is actually in Spanish right now, but it's the option uh, at the top. So bear with me while this is doing something in wrong language, but whatever. Next, we're gonna get another pop-ups, several of them most likely, uh, with something along the lines of uh, enabling floating windows, which I did mention before. Some phones have that disabled by default and you have no option to enable this. Without this option, you this kind of device uh, won't be able to do the, uh, the, the copying of 
data that we need. So anyway, we're going to click on settings right here because we do need to enable this. Let's give it a moment because apparently it's loading applications right now. Come on, can you like... Can probably not, it's not helping me that I can't read what it says on here. So let me quickly change the language. So that's going to be here. Yep. And... Yep. There we go. So I changed it to English so I can actually read the message. Feature not available. Well, would you look at that? I have apparently found the only phone that doesn't allow me to do this. Awesome. So that's kind of what I was talking about. Um, now, I didn't want to figure that out, to be completely honest. I wanted to go smoothly. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, and fortunately, you get to see uh, the phones that don't support this. This is a dog shit device. I'm not going to lie. It's like below 150 bucks. So this could have been expected. It runs crappily and the feature to draw over other apps is disabled on it and unavailable for me to enable it. No matter how much I want, I won't be able to. So therefore, this device will not work. Now, uh, give me about a minute to find another device so I can download this and just kind of continue on with a phone that actually supports this uh, feature. So I'll be back in like about a minute. Okay, so I got a device. Uh, now this one should most certainly work, um, though I do have to add a Google account first and connect to network. So that's going to take me again additional time. So feel free to obviously skip forward, assuming the video won't be sped up already. Okay, <clears throat> so I just signed in. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do the deauthorize crap and scan the QR code. Here we go. Again, deauthorize, uh, allow while using apps, settings. And there we go, that's kind of what we are looking for. So in here, find the clone phone application, which it sees so it should be somewhere right at the top. Click on it and then toggle it on and go back. Give it a moment, I think it's gonna pop up with more things that we need to do. Now here, in the list, you want to deselect basically everything. So deselect anyway, deselect anyway, deselect anyway, deselect anyway. And only keep the apps selected. Click on next, settings, toggle on, go back. Next. And as you can see, this loads only setting, or not settings, but applications. And here we're gonna deselect them, click on a text, and in here, just select a single application. For me, it just shows me two different apps. So I'm gonna choose Facebook as it's one of the smallest size applications that I can choose, which is 188 kilobytes. You are looking for something in like kilobyte ranges or megabytes, and that can be any kind of application. It doesn't really matter. And from there, click on OK, and then Next. So we have just one application selected. Again, we need to deauthorize and then Allow, and then select I understand, and then start migrating. Now, because this is just a single app and it's uh, less than a megabyte in size, uh, the process should be almost instantaneously uh, instantaneous. As you can see, it took uh, seven seconds to finish up the entire thing. So click on done here and this device is done. We don't need it anymore. So next, uh, you'll most likely notice something very interesting when you click on resume. Okay, that's interesting. So it started, it did migrate and successfully migrated. Uh, that is actually surprising to me, which might seem uh, a bit weird. But typically you would be looking for a failed one instead of uh, successful. No matter if it succeeded or failed, it should not really matter. So if it says failed, that's great. Uh, that's what I would have been expecting. In any case, you're going to select done. And this will now take you to the next page of the setup. So we're back in the setup now, but we're past the verification portion of it because the phone got confused as we just did a migration uh, of data that should have been only available to us after we verify the, uh, the device. So we use the screen lock or the Google account. So in this case, the device is kind of considers that you probably should have verified it by then. So it just allows you to finish up the setup. 
So that's what we're gonna do right now. So continue, continue, uh, select whatever, done. And this takes us to the home screen. Now, this time around, the device considers that it finished up the setup. So the setup is completed. You should have verified your device by, by that point. So the device just gets really confused about this, as you can probably imagine. So now um, there's one last thing that we need to do to fully unlock this device, as the protection is still present on it, which is we're going to navigate into the settings, scroll all the way down to additional settings, then scroll down again and select backup and reset. Reset phone, erase all data. Erase all data, and then you're gonna click on the erase all data for the second time in this pop up, and this will begin factory resetting your phone. This process will take about a minute to two minutes to finish up, and once it's completed, you will be taken back to the setup of your phone. But at that point, you can set up your phone in whatever way you want to, as it will be fully unlocked at that point. And that is the last thing that you want to go through, as at the moment, right now, before the reset, the device is still technically locked. So you do need to go through the reset. Now, the only reason I'm not doing this right now on the video is because it just takes a bit of time and shows you absolutely nothing of value in between. Um, but if you really want to see me reset the device, I'll be recording this as a separate video dedicated just as a reset through settings uh, for this device that is completely unassociated with the bypass that I was doing right now, but it's going to be a follow up uh, uh, literally after this video. So. For people that are interested in seeing how that turns out, you can just watch that. But like I said, it's just a fully automatic process that shows you absolutely nothing. But in any case, with that being said, hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to smash like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.